So currently this is my workstation. Today I'm going to be taking you through my day using the MacBook Pro M1 Max 16 inch. I do currently have the 10 core CPU, the 2 core GPU, 32 GB of unified memory, and 1 TB of SSD storage. We'll be testing out the battery life, the compatibility of development tools, um, because it's an ARM-based chip. So most, some of our development tools that we use to work on a daily basis don't work yet. And we'll be testing it against my Intel iMac 2020. So the last iMac made with Intel chip. I will be working on a React Native Stroke Node.js project and doing some deployment on GCP and test flight. And I do have few meetings today. So let's get into the video. So currently this is my workstation. Uh, I do have my Intel iMac over there uh, and I have my MacBook Pro obviously. So uh, we'll be heading to the gym now uh, and I will come back and then we'll start work. Okay, see you in some time. Yeah, this is better. Um, currently it is 11 a.m. I'm going to the gym right now. The MacBook is currently on 100%. Usually it doesn't take any battery while on sleep. So I will probably come back to it on 100%. Uh, let me just head to the gym and come back and then we start work. Okay. Mm -hmm. terrace and um, I usually come here just to uh, have sit down relax it's already around 12, uh, 12 a.m 12 p.m sorry yeah 12 p.m uh, I am quite late because I came to the gym a little bit later than usual so uh, I'm just going to rush home. So I'm back from the gym and the laptop is currently on 100% just like I said. Usually before I start my day, I check my to-do uh, to do list. It's an app called To-Do. To-Do is like uh, in French kind of like T-U-E-X. I'm going to link it in the description below. Uh, it's very minimal. I usually use it on, in the browser. So the first task of the day is using the browser, seeing how Chrome runs on this M1 Max. But to be honest, it just flies through it. So now I'm going to clean up my to-do for the week. Uh, I was supposed to do it on Sunday yesterday, but I didn't have the time to do it. But I'm just going to clean up my to-do and then I will start work. Yeah, hello, to you. You're downstairs? Oh, okay, one minute. Come on. So I ordered a chicken stroganoff, is it how they call it here? Yeah. Chicken stroganoff with herb rice. Um, it's usually, it's I think 500 and something calories. Um, because when you order on Swiggy, you see the calories beside it, which I love that feature. And uh, you know, Swiggy is an app that I am very, very uh, excited about. I wish I could work with them uh, and see their processes. So as an app developer or software developer, I don't know if I'm the only one that always have this feeling, but whenever now I see an app, I'm actually looking at the insides and the, the workings of the app, not really the app. So I do appreciate apps more. Immediately I see a feature or the UI is nice or is smooth without hiccups. I easily recognize this stuff. And so hence that's why I love the Swiggy app. If you know Zomato, if you're in India and you know Zomato and Swiggy, you know there's a big contrast in terms of uh, UX, which is a number one stuff. If you are doing development, be it mobile or app development, you need to make sure you have a very good UX because if not, people are going to click off. Yeah, so I'm going to eat this food now. And I, ha I currently have a meeting now 
with some interns that we're going to uh, onboard today. Uh, so I'm going to actually go into that meeting on my MacBook M1 Pro. The, the name is confusing, but MacBook, just know when I say MacBook, I'm talking about it. So let me go into that meeting and then I will get back to you and we will continue working. I don't know if you can hear me from there, but I'm going to shout. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm done with the first meeting of the day. Uh, I have some uh, a couple more later on. So currently, we are on 89% battery. So I did uh, my to-do and I did some cleaning up on the repo. So um, we are down only, uh, so let's say 11%. Uh, now I am going to get into real work, which is the React Native work. Um, I am going to be working on a React Native app, trying to deploy this app because it has been due for a long time. So actually, I am going to go to a coffee shop to work. I haven't been to a coffee shop for about, let's say, a year or a year plus. So I'm going to go to a coffee shop and work from there. I usually do it before, but now since I got the iMac, I have not been working, but now I have a powerful, more powerful machine. I am going to go to the coffee shop now and try and work for like two hours before coming back. Okay, uh, I will see you there and uh, I will discuss about compatibility and what apps work, what uh, tools work, things like Docker and what have you. Okay, uh, we'll see you in the coffee shop, okay? Peace. So we are currently at 57% battery. Uh, I just got back home now from the cafe. Um, I actually today I didn't work on React Native a lot. I did a lot of admin stuff, uh, merging some uh, pull requests, uh, creating some branches, onboarding the new interns today. So this wouldn't be a very accurate uh, usage of the laptop. But for what I have done, uh, I have run servers. I I did some merge requests, I ran a Node.js project, I ran a Vue project. So with this work I've done, it's still on 57% uh, and it's now uh, 8, 750 actually, yeah, 750. And to show you that, so if you're a project manager, a web designer, people that don't use heavy apps, you're going to get away with at least, I think one day and a half of work. That's if you work from 95 that's uh, eight hours you're going to get at least maybe two days at the end of the second day you will need to charge it but uh with my use case uh with react native i have tested this before which i have gone six hours of intensive coding on react native and anyone that knows react native it is not easy <laughs> to put on react native apps on a laptop and get six hours it is crazy it's insane on my older laptop, it will just take me an hour to burn out and burn down the laptop. So, but uh, battery life is amazing on this laptop. So if you're getting it for the battery life, yes. Uh, the only advice I will give you if you're a React Native developer is when you're specking it, you should go for more RAM. Uh, more RAM because when you're using S-Code, uh, it is uh, literally, it literally sucks RAM away from the machine. So when you're doing React Native or any intensive uh, RAM intensive uh, task, you should always uh, get more RAM. And uh, for me, 512 SSD is a good space, but I will advise to go for the one terabyte because later on in the future, especially with React Native building and archiving uh, a lot of projects, you will end up taking a lot of RAM. I have gone to a point where all my S code files and the simulator files have gone up to over 80, 100 gigabytes, which is. Yeah, Alexa, thank you. He's going, she's going to say one more.
<laughs> we'll have to wait for her. No, God, please, no, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? We need more SSD. I think one terabyte SSD is a baseline for me, especially if you are doing stuff that saves a lot of data. Uh, you can get away by buying external uh, external storage, but the problem is with S code, you need the internal storage, and that is where the whole uh, the whole data is being stored. So make sure you bump your ssd to at least one terabyte and i think that's a sweet start compatibility of apps and other software for react native pod is still uh has, still has a problem with a library called the ffi so it's still not supported on arm based chip so we you need to use a, a trick to run it on arm based chip i can link maybe a tutorial for it in the description or if you want me to make a video on how to set up uh, a, a work environment or a react native environment on the arm based system you can just drop it in the comment below but all in all uh it is a very good lap of laptop for development especially when you are doing a, any javascript based project uh for python i have come into i i have i had some couple of uh, problems with some libraries uh, especially with a library called Cairo it has a problem with some um, some dependencies that is not compatible with the arm based chip but there's a workaround which I have done but it's very cumbersome so anytime I have a problem I just depend on my Intel IMAP which uh, because I have the option some people might not have this option so keep this in mind when buying this laptop okay so this will be the end of this video uh, and hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you do enjoy the video please drop a like share it to your friends that are trying to get a new m1 pro or m1 max chip uh chip laptop uh, but yeah see you in the next video bye bye